right, welcome back. In the last video, we got started with our menus and we made this menu next layout. And in this video, we are going to make a retry menu, which will be triggered whenever you die in a level. You will have the opportunity to uh, just retry the level right from that screen. Instead of having to go back to the map, you will also have the opportunity to quit and that will just take you back out to the title screen, which we have not made yet. And we now have us a template to make our next menu. Come over here in our layouts folder and right click on our menu next and select duplicate. And then I'm just going to rename this uh, menu underscore retry in all caps. Close out our menu next and then double click our menu retry and it looks the same. Come down here to our event sheets. We can't duplicate event sheets, but we can create new ones. So I'm going to right click on our menus folder and add an event sheet. And I'm going to call this E underscore menu underscore retry. If we go back to our menu retry layout, we can change the event sheet in the properties to match our menu retry. We don't need our level total layer. So I am going to right click and delete and it's going to give us a message that says it deletes the instances on that layer as well. And our level totals just has that frame. So I'm going to say yes, delete. And on our text layer, I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to select each of these and delete them because we do not need them in this layout. Come down here to our buttons. We can delete that button as well, button play. We won't need that. And then uh, back on our text layer, this next, we are going to use that and we'll get to that in just a minute. So I'm going to lock the text layer and then everything else is gonna stay the same. We have our fade layer here uh, we, that duplicated over our tile maps and our background as well. So I'm going to make this look a little different than our menu next. So on tile map bricks, if we unlock that, select the tile map and I'm going to get our background and just fill in this area and start from new. I'm going to select our pencil tool, the window, and I'm just going to paint some windows in. Lock the tile maps layer tile map brick layer and unlock the background layer and I just that doesn't look right so I'm just going to move this around until I get some different patterns going on in the window transparency so I'm cool with that I'm gonna lock the background and then on our buttons layer make sure yours is unlocked and I'm going to right click and select sprite place it let's go up to our folder and load our button green. Open that up. We can right click on one of these nodes and say set to bounding box. We can go to our origin tool and put this in the top right corner. Exit out of that. Let's rename this btn underscore uh, retry. btn underscore retry. Sounds good. And we're going to do the same thing we did to uh, the button on the other layout. We're going to change the size by using the scale. An X scale of we had 22% by 22%. I think that's a good size. And as far as the position, come over a little. So 114, 327. Let's double click again and insert a sprite. Go to our folders and let's get the red one set the origin point to the top left and our bounding box and exit out. I'm going to name this btn underscore uh, quit and we're actually going to be able to use this one a couple more times. So I'm going to go down to the size and do the same thing on the x scale. Go 22 percent, 22 percent. There we go. Since the origin is in the same place as the other button. We can put the position to a 114. Oh, what a good guess that was. And then I'm going to 
drop it down to let's uh, let's bring it up a little. How about 421? I'm going to lock our buttons layer, and I'm going to go to our text, unlock it, and I'm going to grab this text piece, and right click on it, and clone the object type, and we can place it up here somewhere, and then go into our TXT next with it highlighted, delete it. Then come up here to this one that we just created, highlight it, let's go and rename it. This is going to be txt underscore retry, and it already has the properties we want uh, for the most part. But let's go to the text and make sure it says retry. Let's go back up here and set our position. Since our origin point's in the middle, we can go ahead and set our x at uh, 180. And then I'm going to zoom in and just kind of eyeball where this needs to go. Uh, I'm going to go up a little. So something like that. That's what it looks like on my screen. Those are those values. Uh, I don't know if yours will match up that same way, but uh, there you go. Just eyeball it. Try to get it as close to the middle as you can. And then let's go ahead and right click on that and clone the object type and place it down here. And we know that it can go in the middle. So let's type in 180 for the X position. And let's come down here and change the text to quit. I'm going to actually go into the font and change this Consolas to Arial. I like that one much better. I'm going to untick that BB code box anyways. Come up here to our retry and do the same thing. Let's change our Consolas to Arial. And it's way too big. Let's go to the size and say 18. Maybe stretch it out just a little bit and come down here and do the same thing with our quit text. I'm going to change the size to 18. Now we have to reposition it. Our X position is 180, so that's still good. I'm going to zoom in and it obviously needs to come down. Maybe a little more. And then the same thing with retry. Uh, our X position is 180. We know that much. We can zoom in and it looks like it's going to need to go down a little, maybe a little more. Okay, so those are where mine ended up. And then one more thing we can add to the text is I want to say that you did not pass the level. So double click and choose a text object, place it, and I'm going to call this txt underscore level failed. Then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to change the text to level space failed. Let's change the color so we can see. I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to change the font to maybe this Franklin Gothic. Uh, maybe bold and italic. And then let's just bump this size up to something like 50. And before we change all this, actually that's looking like it's doing what it's supposed to. Let's change the horizontal alignment to center, vertical alignment to center, and the origin to uh, center. That looks much better. Make sure it has plenty of room there. We can scroll back up to our position, 180 for the X. And then uh, just kind of eyeball it from there. I'm going to move mine up, maybe. This just doesn't really pop out at me. There's one thing that makes text pop out more than anything, that's a drop shadow. As of the recording of this video, Construct 3 does not have an actual drop shadow effect for text that is built into the engine. So we can actually create our own. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to clone the object type and then I'm just going to place it uh, wherever. I'm going to place it off to the side. Scroll down, change the color to black. And then let's actually, let's uh, rename this also. So txt level failed 
Uh, then I'm going to say underscore shadow. So we know exactly what it is. I'm going to get the position from this 180, 151. So I'm going to put that in here. 180, comma, 151. On my Z order, I'm going to show the active layer. And I want my shadow below my level failed. So I'm going to drag that down. As long as this one is on top, that's all that matters. And then I'm going to move the text level failed shadow. So I'm going to grab it over here in our project panel. So it's selected. And I'm going to use the arrow keys to go to the right and then down. I'm actually going to zoom in a little so I can see it. And then maybe down one more, maybe right one more. So right twice, down twice. And you see we got a little shadow going on. Now, if you know anything about drop shadows, you know that they aren't crisp, clean cut lines like that. They have a bit of a blur to them. With our text level failed shadow object selected, I'm going to come over here to the properties and where it says effects, I'm going to edit effects and we're going to add a new effect and I want the radial blur. So I'm just going to start typing it in and there it is radial blur. Select that. We can exit out of this and right away, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, you can see all these little shadow parts all over the place. Uh, that's because it's way too intense. So I'm going to bring the radius down way down to say 5%. And if we zoom in, we can see that it just kind of barely falls off on the edges. And that's what you want in a shadow. And it also makes it look like it expands too. So it covers a little more area. But the main thing is, is that it gives us a background. And again, it's very subtle, but it does the trick and it pops that text out of there. The design process is complete. I am going to lock the text layer. And now we're going to go into our menu retry event sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up our retry button. So I'm going to right click at a group and I'm going to call this retry button. Let's add an event to that group and go to our input folder, our touch object, and we're going to do on tapped object. And that object is going to be button retry. Click OK. Done. Add an action and do the same thing we did on our last menu. Pick that system and say go to layout and we're just going to send it back to level one because we only have the one level for right now. This will change, but this gives us some functionality to the button. Let's go ahead and set up our quit button as well. So I'm going to add an event in this same group, input, touch, on tap object. This time we're going to pick the quit button. Say done. And that action we actually don't have an action because we don't have anywhere for it to go right now. We're going to leave this one uh, alone for right now. It's not going to have any functionality. That is something we'll have to set up a little later. So as we did with the last menu with the fade in and fade out, I want that to happen here as well. Down here, I'm going to just uh, right click and say add an event and I'm going to pick system on start of layout, I'm going to move this entire block up to the top. I'm going to add an action and I'm going to call a function and that's going to be the fade in function. I'm going to go with a half a second again, 0 0.5. And that's going to get us faded in to the layer. So when we hit retry, it's going to send us back to level one. I want it to do like we did in the last one. I want it to fade out. So let's add that action, the function fade out. I'm going to go 0 0.5 again. So here we have uh, the same issue we did last time. I'm going to move this above because I want it to fade out first, but it takes half a second to do it. And if we don't put a weight in there, it's going to immediately go back to level one and we won't get to see the fade. So let's add an action system weight and say 0 0.5 and that goes in between those two and like the last menu we created we will still have the same problem here 
if we hit the button a bunch of times, it's going to keep calling this fade out over and over again. And as subtle of a glitch it may look like, it still just doesn't look right. And we have the opportunity to fix that because we already have the variable created. We did that in the last video, so we're going to reuse it. So I'm just going to double click in this area right here and pick system. I'm going to compare a variable and that variable is going to be our touch active. And I want to know if it is equal to zero, meaning no touch has been detected yet. And once we hit that button, I want this to become false. So we'll add the action system set value of touch active and we'll set it to one. So this will no longer be true. Let's make that the first thing that happens. And once it's set to one, whenever we come back to this layout, it's going to be one still because nothing changes it back to zero. We have to do that ourselves. So on start of layout, let's add an action up here. Say system set value of touch active to zero. And then while we're at it, we can take this condition here and just uh, copy it. I'm going to hold control down on the keyboard and then click and drag a copy down here. So now uh, this condition has this variable check as well. Later on when we start uh, adding other necessary things to the game, this will come into play. We'll have somewhere for button quit to go. As for now, we know that we're going to need this anytime we press a button. We want this whole system to take place. Let's go ahead over to uh, level one. Actually, I just thought of something. To make it a little more dramatic, if we change this weight to a full second, what's going to happen is once we hit the button, it's going to fade out. It's going to take half a second to fade out, and then we'll sit another half a second in black before we go to the next level. And getting us just a half a second more in total darkness, I think will add a little bit of a more dramatic effect. Okay, one more thing we need to take care of. Uh, we need to make sure that we see this uh, retry menu. The only way we're going to get to the retry menu is if we fail the level. So that's going to take place in our controls under player death. Before we just had it uh, restart the layout. But what we want to do is let's go into it, double click into that and go to this go to layout. And we will pick the retry menu or menu retry. That should be it. So I'm going to go over to our level one layout, make sure that that gets called up so that's the one we preview. I hit preview and let's play some games. Collecting coins, jumping on barrels, and hitting a spike. And then we die. And there we go. Level failed. And our, our quit button does nothing. If I go to retry, it fades out. And it's very subtle, but we hit darkness and then it starts the whole process over again. So, success. Uh, there is a little more that we will be adding to our retry level or our retry menu, but that will be once we get into the map functionality. So for now, uh, it's set up pretty good. It works. And in the next video, we will make our title screen. Then from there, I believe we will start on the map. That is it for this video. I will see you in the next one. And as always, don't forget to save. Thank you.